All right, you guys are smart. I was going to do by myself the first time and thought, okay, they'll think it looks really strange and then we'll get them to all join in, but you guys did it. <laughs> so thank you. Because to me, that human thunderstorm is the anthem of a revolution. It's because of the recognition and the followership by all of you that turned it into a shared belief that we were creating the sound of a human thunderstorm. You guys want to try it again and do it all together? Yes. Yeah? All right, let's do it. the anthem of a revolution, like I mentioned. And I think blockchain is revolutionizing the social impact landscape. But social impact has three different definitions, or many different definitions, sorry. But there are three common themes among all of them. Positive change, sustainable transformation, and research needs. But unfortunately, not all positive impact initiatives maintain these three characteristics. A good example of this is play pumps. Play pumps created these merry-go-round types of devices attached to a water pump and a storage tank. The idea was that children would play on these merry-go-rounds and pump water into the storage tank for later. This project gained a ton of positive media attention and they were installed at a number of villages around Africa. But it wasn't until after they were installed they realized the children actually found them exhausting and the women had to push the merry-go-rounds to get the water up for later. It's stories like this that made me realize that I wanted to see where my charitable causes were going and where the money was ending up. And it made me realize the importance of effective altruism, which is using evidence and reasoning to find the most effective way to benefit others. And while I don't expect us to all start analyzing our next charitable contribution, I do think we need to start asking more questions and expecting more transparency. These are the types of things that blockchain can enable. So in March, I got the opportunity to go to a conference in Johannesburg where blockchain for social impact was a dominant topic of conversation. And while I was there, I met this amazing woman named Dr. Marianne Felix, who among many of her accomplishments, most recently founded a program called Yoga for Alex. Yoga for Alex offers yoga classes, counseling, mentoring, and even financial support to youth, who she calls youngsters, of a township called Alexandra. Now, Alexandria is one of the poorest urban regions in the country, with only 50% employment rate. It is also one of the most dense regions in all of South Africa. There are more than 20,000 of these shacks, many of which are made from cardboard, and that's what people call home. To give you a visual, Abbotsford has 355 people per square kilometer. Alexandria has just under 28,000 people per square kilometer. And among this township, there are five high schools, but throughout all of them, the pass rate for grade 12 students is only 34%. And it's reported that these children feel an overwhelming sense of fear and negativity about everyday life. And so Mary Ann created this program based on the research and the feedback she got directly from the youngsters that said yoga throughout their day helped calm their mind from the fear and negativity of everyday life. She also realized as the program evolved that it helped decrease defiant behavior in the classrooms, increase concentration, and increase commitment as well. Now this is a really positive model of a social impact organization where she's creating a positive systemic change based on research needs. But while learning about the program, there was one story in particular that stood out to me. It was about a boy named Sindisu. Sindisu was one of the 34% that had worked really, really hard to pass his grade 12 year. But Sindisu is also part of the 1.1 billion people in the world that don't have access to their identity. Imagine not having a passport or a birth certificate or a driver's license to attest to who you are. Sindisu's dream was to go to university, but because he didn't have documentation of his identity, he wasn't able to get in. He told us that his dreams had turned into his nightmares and they kept him up at night. His brother saw this overwhelming fear and negativity in his life and encouraged him to try the Yoga for Alex program. While he had disbelief about the impacts yoga could actually have, he tried it anyways. And he began to love the program. 
He got more and more involved doing the yoga classes, working directly with Marianne. He even did a two-year training program to become a certified yoga instructor. With the help and support of the community, he even was able to get the documents of identity he needed, and he's now enrolled in school. So as I said, Dr. Marianne's model is creating a ripple of change. Her and Alex, people like Sindisu sorry, are, are revolutionizing Alexandra by creating hope and opportunities for other youngsters just like him. But imagine if we could take it one step further. Imagine if in real time, we could track the progress of this organization. Imagine if from right here in Canada, I could contribute directly to Sindisu and watch as those donations made a positive impact in his life and see where they're being spent. Again, these are the types of possibilities that blockchain enables. But it's important to distinguish the difference between blockchain and cryptocurrency. Because cryptocurrency is just one application of the underlying blockchain technology. But in 2009, it was a pivotal moment for both of them. It was the introduction of Bitcoin. But it was hot on the heels of a financial crisis where people lost money and trust in traditional financial systems. They were open to seeing if there was a better way. And while this was the first introduction to a mainstream cryptocurrency, the underlying blockchain technology had been long in the works. In fact, since 1992, there were people, a group of 700 people, who were part of a mailing list where they would discuss and advocate for the use of privacy-enhancing technology, like cryptography, as a route to social and political change. So this introduction of Bitcoin was an inspirational new belief in a digital value system and a way to see the applicability of blockchain technology. But what amazed me was the evolution of a community around it. This community believed in the inspiration that Bitcoin offered and wanted to continue to grow the community around it. Those 700 people turned into more than 25 million cryptocurrency wallets that existed as of this summer. Those 700 people were the initial voices that led to a revolution. So what is this underlying blockchain technology? While we won't get into the technicalities of it today, we'll go through some of the capabilities at a high level. Blockchain, public blockchains are a digital secure record of data that's open for anyone to participate in. The word itself breaks down the technology. So bits of data are collected and stored in these blocks. Once this block is full, it's added to a chain of other full blocks in chronological order since the inception of the technology. This data is secure and validated by a distributed network of devices around the world. And these devices and the people in the network are not managed or run by a person or an entity. And this is what makes them a decentralized and distributed community. And the information and the data on the blockchain, sorry, the data on the blockchain can be information or value. And this is what opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Because while the internet revolutionized the movement of information, I'm sure we all use email on a day-to-day -day basis. Blockchain will revolutionize the movement of value. And this can be anything from a record of a transaction, so Alice sending Bob money. It can be a record of my assets, like Bitcoin, or a record of my mortgage title, or even my identity. And traditionally, we've been forced to trust in third-party intermediaries like governments or for-profit organizations like banks and the Googles of the world to maintain these records of value, or other records. But the problem with this is we lose control, we lose ownership, and we lose transparency. And when we're trusting them to manage them, we no longer have the ability to see if they've been tampered with or shared without our consent. Our trust in these organizations it was what runs our entire economy, and yet this trust is based on uncertainty. But finally now, we have the ability to trust in a technology. We don't need to know the people around the world maintaining the network or if they have our best interest at heart, because we can trust in the immutable data and the audit trail that it creates. And technology aside, like I said, the amazing thing to me is the community that evolved around those strong ethos that Bitcoin offered first, through privacy, transparency, decentralized and distributed technology as a necessity for society. Now, Bitcoin, blockchain, and other cryptocurrencies have been in the mainstream media a lot more in the past two years, for better, for worse. But on a deeper level, the industry has been growing in strides. 
Since 2016, there have been 118 new social impact organizations created in the blockchain industry, of which Stanford research shows 20% of them would not be possible without blockchain technology, and 86% are making a material improvement on an existing solution. And we're seeing this today. Bitcoin is increasing financial inclusion by reducing our reliance on banks and their monetary systems of control. <coughs> Zug in Switzerland is looking at putting their voting systems on the blockchain to increase transparency for their government elections. And Estonia has already digitized their identity management system and is looking at incorporating blockchain to increase its efficiency. And so while this technology is in its infancy, in fact, some reference it to being equivalent to the internet in 1994, the social impact landscape is being dramatically revolutionized. And we're seeing these types of problems because when community support is critical because there is no centralized entity behind it, they have the opportunity to create solutions that will provide human rights, freedoms, and choices around the world that people create. As a venture capitalist, Chris Dixon simply put it once, Digital services can now be owned and operated by a community as opposed to being owned and operated by a small number of for-profit organizations. And so next time you hear Bitcoin or blockchain, think positive impact. Think of banking the unbanked and connecting the unconnected. Think of redistributing wealth, power, and opportunities in a way that will change the world as we know it. Think of people like Sindisu and giving him hope and opportunities and the many other people like him that we can help with that. So as you join me in the beginning in creating the sounds of a human thunderstorm, please join me on this revolutionizing journey. Namaste.